The color pink comes with so many different associations. It's ingrained into our consciousness. Literally, it's impossible to perceive the color without influence. Let's talk about the war against pink. I love that the color pink is not so one dimensional. I love on one hand how it could be so delicate and sweet, but hold such heavy contradictions, such as it being obnoxious and even unpleasant. I love that the right shade of hot pink can make you think of Hollywood glamour and sophistication and boldness. Whereas a lighter shade of pink can make you think youthful and delicate. The color is both innocent yet erotic. Despite the negative stereotypes and associations with the color pink, she is a multi-hyphenated girly. The simplest way to frame the ways in which people perceive pink means that we have to situate it beneath the umbrella of internalized misogyny, point blank. There are a few theories as to why pink is associated with women, though I do want to note that there's really not enough research to really back any of these theories. One of the theories is that French fashion had a heavy influence on that. Some believe that the pink triangles worn by queer people during concentration camps is the reason why the color is associated with being very feminine. What we do know is that from history, pink was not always associated with women. In fact, we can pinpoint the exact moment in time Time where that shift began. Before I even say that exact moment in time, if I were to describe a decade that totally leaned into gender specific roles, where you have the man at work and you have the woman who is a stay at home mom, she's glammed up, she's taking care of the kids, you have these two kids, a dog, a white picket fence, what decade do you think embodies this traditional view of gender roles? I'll give you three seconds. If you said the 1950s, you are correct. That is a decade in which we see this shift of pink being marketed towards women. Very obviously, this binary view of gender is a marketing ploy that lives under capitalism. If you walk into a toy section of a store, you automatically know what's marketed towards girls versus boys. And I want to state before going any further that thinking of gender as a binary is problematic in and of itself for the accessibility of the audience so that we could just call a thing a thing. I will be utilizing the Western views of gender as a binary. I have never been a not like the other girls type of girl. I've always been described as very girly, into pretty things, and a pink princess. However, I know that's not the case for all women. And while I love the women who are discovering their feminine side, which is often associated with the color pink, and now they're into pink things, we know that was not always the case. And we know that a lot of times, those super feminine girls were often ostracized in ways which made other young women feel like, I don't wanna be like those girls. And that's because the color pink and being very feminine and girly have very negative stereotypes associated with it. Because of that, it's really difficult to separate the messaging and the motifs and the symbolism and the stereotypes associated with pink because the color itself begins to take on those symbols and implicates the cultural meaning itself. For a woman who wants to push against that, it becomes the anti-pink brigade. And it's really not a quarrel with the color itself. It's more so everything that it represents. Unfortunately, you internalize misogyny when you do this and you paint pictures about women who are like me without even realizing it. Hi, my name is Ki with an I, not an E, also known as Pinky Sensei across all social media platforms. And I wanna share my experiences in spaces where pink is heavily frowned upon because of that internalized misogyny. For those of you who do not know, I am a doctoral student. I am in a PhD program for engineering and technology. I'm now going into my second half of my second year. And at the end of this upcoming spring 2023 semester, I will have finished more than half of my program. Back in 2020, when I was applying for programs, my appearance really spoke volumes to people on the opposite end of the screen when I was undergoing interviews and such. To situate this story for you, we are still in the thick of the pandemic when it was time to apply for programs. So all interviews and conversations were happening virtually. And 
you can kind of see what my background would have looked like during these interviews. Now, I easily could have put up some type of virtual background and perhaps even presented myself a little differently. Now, obviously I didn't have the colored hair or anything. I definitely know how to assimilate and perform professionalism in those spaces, but there are certain things you just can't hide when you're a woman like me. And at my age, I refuse to assimilate to the point of masking in order to gain acceptance in certain spaces. My resume has some really quirky things that to be quite frank, some people would probably say, why would she ever include these things? As a hyper feminine black woman, I do not want to be in places where I have to overtly perform for acceptance. So on my resume, I have some quirky things like personality assessment results. So I have my Myers-Briggs type, which is an INTJ. I even have my Hogwarts house because I just felt like that's cute and quirky. I have my Enneagram results. The point is, I want you to know what you're getting into with me just based on my resume alone. My resume also includes the color pink. Based on that alone, I already know it's chucked to the garbage because of the preconceived notions people may have. I'm okay with that. For those who were like, you know what? This resume is a little weird, but her experiences speak to me. It invites a whole nother obstacle when they are meeting me. Again, because I'm cognizant of the perceptions of pink and being a black woman in general, I know how to perform professionalism. So will I wear a natural hair color in those settings? Absolutely. Will I cut my nails down? Absolutely. But am I gonna cover up like my color-coded bookshelf and on my pink shelf you can see all these little knickknacks and things? Absolutely not. And this has its pros and its cons. On the pro side, it lets me know, off rip, if I'm in a safe space where I can mostly show up as my authentic self within the realms of performing professionalism. On the flip side, it means that I'm literally judged for those things and sometimes I don't gain access into spaces that may advance my professional path or even my personal growth. It's definitely a risk bringing my pink self into spaces where it's really not welcome. And those spaces are more often than not heavily dominated by males. If you don't know, I work in ed tech, specifically the field of artificial intelligence. And while I am so honored and privileged and blessed and lucky to work for an organization under a manager who really accepts me for me, that's not the norm across the field. Similarly, with me applying, going back to 2020, with me applying for PhD programs, I knew there were certain spaces where someone like me would not be welcome. In fact, I received feedback telling me I would need to tone it down if I wanted to survive in academia, specifically STEM. And while I valued that feedback, feedback is a gift, I decided I didn't have to take that to heart. Instead, I figured I would find a program where I was meant to be, and I did. That doesn't make it super easy if I'm being honest though. But I sleep peacefully at night knowing I can at least bring my authentic self, at least 87% of her, into the spaces that I'm in. The preconceived associations with pink run so deep that even when I was a classroom educator, listen, my entire classroom was pink. I sat through a diversity, equity, and inclusiveness training wherein they basically discussed how in order for the male students to feel more welcomed, teachers shouldn't have too much pink in their classroom. This is during a DEI session, and that is what they stated. They decided to uphold binary views of gender and enforce internalized misogyny. There's so much I can unpack within the history, capitalism and the implications of such as it relates to the color pink and i'd be here all day i don't know maybe i'll do a deep dive in a series on pink who knows but i just want to acknowledge as a fellow pink girly that i'm here and i see your struggle and then i hope that you guys find spaces where you can at least bring 50 percent of your authentic self without too much judgment thank you so much for tuning in <laughs> I cannot believe that today is day 12 of the 12 days of Christmas. I have never been consistent on YouTube ever, 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 ever. And so for me, this was something to push my creativity and my consistency 
and build community. I feel so privileged to have a core audience who were willing to take the ride with me as I shifted my content. It means so, 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 so much to me. I'm really good with my words, and even now I'm struggling to find the words to communicate and articulate just how much it meant to me. To show my gratitude, I did have a gift within every single video. Those giftaways are still open and they will not close until Sunday. So if you missed the video, no worries. You are more than welcome to go check out the video before Sunday evening and leave the emoji if you're interested in a gift for that day. As a final token of my gratitude to the pretty committee, the final gift for the 12 days of Christmas is a $200 cash prize. To enter it, all you have to do is leave a money emoji and I will take your comment and enter it into a random selector. I'm going out of town next week. So before I head out of town, I will go through and make sure all of the winners are selected and then they will be communicated with that following week, which is the week of January 15th or 16th. And so I will reach out to everyone individually by responding to your comment on YouTube. Again, thank you so much for just like rocking with me as I tried out new content that I feel like truly honored who I am at my core, not the job that I do, not necessarily where I am right now in life, not necessarily where I want to be in life, but just who I am in my heart. I appreciate it so much. I'm looking forward to 2023 and producing amazing content for you all. And I hope that the pretty committee sticks around. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.